bem-vindos a mais uma Trends Interview, desta vez sobre Future of Digital Infrastructures. Vamos falar com um dos analistas IDC sobre algumas das nossas 10 previsões para este tema. O futuro das infraestruturas. De facto, estes últimos tempos, sobretudo, mostraram-nos que as infraestruturas não são só um fenómeno tecnológico. Já não é só uma questão tecnológica, não é uma questão técnica. De facto, foi possível verificar que as tecnologias, as infraestruturas, foram fundamentais para suportar aquilo que foi a resiliência, a capacidade de resposta das organizações para os desafios que assistimos todos nos últimos tempos. Aquilo que nós vamos discutir reflete as 10 previsões para os próximos anos que a IDC fez relacionada com este tema do Digital Infrastructure. Temos três grandes grupos de previsões. As primeiras previsões, mais relacionadas com o short term, têm muito a ver com esta necessidade das organizações como que fazerem em três meses o que talvez tivessem planeado fazer em três anos. Esta necessidade de avançar muito rapidamente para uma transformação dos elementos fundamentais da infraestrutura. As segundos, os, o segundo grupo de, de previsões está sobretudo relacionado com o tema da resiliência. Não resiliência tecnológica, mas a resiliência da organização. E finalmente, as últimas previsões que vamos aqui discutir têm a ver com o facto de como é que o futuro das infraestruturas se enquadra naquilo que a IDC tem vindo a falar ser o futuro das organizações, the future of enterprise. Portanto, será sobre estes três principais elementos que vamos discutir aqui, sobretudo, como é que o Covid impactou esta, esta visão geral das infraestruturas digitais. Vamos falar um pouco dos aspectos fundamentais do tal enquadramento da Future of Infrastructure no Future of Enterprise. Vamos naturalmente falar do tema de cloud e de que forma é que a cloud e as plataformas e as arquiteturas cloud são cada vez mais marcantes naquilo que é o modelo de framework que nós também apresentamos e que defendemos. O nosso convidado vai falar um pouco sobre isso. E, finalmente, iremos falar daquilo que serão os próximos passos e algumas recomendações que a IDC gostaria de passar a todos vocês sobre quais é que serão os próximos passos e como é que poderão avançar nesta também vossa transformação das infraestruturas digitais. Connosco, teremos a nossa analista internacional, Silvia Pai. I will switch now to English to welcome Sylvia, the research director of IDC Health Insights, that will help us to understand a little bit better the 10 predictions of the infrastructure, but generically how IDC is seeing this topic of the transformation of digital infrastructure. Welcome, Sylvia. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here today. No one wants to talk about COVID, but it's necessarily a topic that you, we need to discuss. But let's try to understand the positive impacts that COVID had in the way that enterprises look nowadays to the topic of infrastructure. How can you explain to us what IDC is seeing, the change of the mindset, the way organizations are looking to this topic of infrastructure and how COVID changed that way of looking to the topic? Sure. Well, when we think about the impact of COVID, of course, our first reaction is about thinking about the impact of, on our lives, on the economy. But as you said, there are also some positive aspects. And probably the silver linings that we have seen uh, is the fact that uh, COVID uh, has uh, put in a tremendous acceleration in digital transformation. Digital transformation was a sort of a nice to do for everyone before COVID, but now it has mandated really, it's becoming a mandate really, an existential mandate if we want. Both government and private enterprises has to develop what we call digital resiliency, which is the ability for an organization to rapidly adapt to business disruption by leveraging all the digital capabilities, not only to restore business as it was, but also to capitalize on these change conditions and drive innovation. And if I think about my topic of research, which is healthcare, uh, clearly we have seen this phenomenon magnified and there has been changes in the structures of the organization, in how healthcare is delivered, how healthcare services is delivered, uh, even in the physical organization of the uh, of a healthcare organization. Think about ICUs that have need to be set really overnight. And 
digital really played a role in supporting this transformation. Digital is what has enabled the resiliency. And what has emerged is that, uh, uh, for instance, in healthcare, healthcare executive has realized that uh, they need to close the technology gap to leverage at best the opportunity that digital offered. And they also started to realize that uh, by developing a strong digital resilient organization, they could finally start realizing some of uh, the, um, let's say, key business model innovation that they were looking at. And a significant part of the digital transformation gaps that they identified were about closing the um, uh, shortcomings of their digital infrastructure. The digital infrastructure really emerged as the enabling factor of uh, digital transformation and enabling factor of keeping up with the required acceleration of digital transformation. And you need to be honest, this is not surprising for healthcare, but also for other industries, legacy infrastructure and application have always been a major barrier to the transformation of healthcare as they can, um, healthcare or, you know, of the industries. Um, really, they because they couldn't support properly innovative tools such as artificial intelligence, complex real-time monitoring system, and they cannot support more integrated business model that sees more dynamic relationship with customer, with patients, so forth and, uh, so, forth and so on. On top of that, we should say that uh, um, legacy management uh, absorb large part of uh, the um, IT, uh, IT budget. And this is particularly true for healthcare where you see a, a whooping 63%, but we have similar data uh, for also, also uh, for other industry. So they have realized, so health, uh, the IT executive have realized that uh, digital infrastructure should be seen not only as the um, uh, 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 business, uh, let's say something that interests uh, the IT department, uh, but it's something that uh, really uh, impact the um, competitiveness, the, uh, the dynamism of uh, uh, the organization. And to have an organization that operates digitally end-to-end, -end, you need to look for a new approach toward digital in in infrastructure. Uh, ICT infrastructure must support agility, recognizing the change in technologies landscape and the current and future requirements where the consumption model will change and where the way in which we access the data is, is changing. So how this data is accessed, presents, and how is it consumed? So really, uh, the digital infrastructure is uh, an enabling factor, is an enabling element of this digital transformation, which is the positive impact, let's say, of COVID. There are two elements, at least, that companies now are very much more aware. One is the topic of the work and how the uh, innovation uh, impact the work and how different ways of work are changing the way uh, organizations and societies and, uh, as a whole understand our work. And the second one is this uh, uh, way of thinking new business models. Uh, what is the role of the infrastructure? How infrastructure is impacting these two core, these two central topics of the work and the new business models uh, in your view? No, that's a very good question, and really, uh, it's a good sequence on the uh, on what we were saying. It's you know, um, digital infrastructure should be seen as an enabling element for new relationship with customers, and in the case of healthcare, it's new relationship with the patient. So let's think about. Uh, what is the last time that we went uh, to see our, our doctor for non-COVID, let's say, related uh, uh, question? And um, it's very likely that in during the last year, we have uh, uh, talked, we have interacted with our doctor through new tools as uh, telemedicine or connected health technologies, which is 
quite new, you know. Uh, and this increase that we have seen uh, is driving further investments in this area. But this invest the investment in this area are not just related to the you know, software piece or to the application uh, part. They uh, need to be supported by a digital infrastructure that uh, is highly available, provides continuity of the services, as well as the protection of the data that in Alcar are particularly, imp uh, particularly important. And you know, when I talked about availability, continuity of service, we need to think that these new digital services are quite demanding in terms of workload. Think about uh, video processing, think about real-time data exchange. Here there are a few examples, for instance, uh, uh, Royal Marsden, which is a very specialized hospital in the UK, is uh, uh, using telemedicine to do follow-up on cancer patients. Uh, and therefore, the amount of information and medical imaging that needs to be shared require a very highly performant uh, infrastructure. Same thing for a chatbot like Suve, which is a, a chatbot that helps uh, Estonian citizens to find basic information about uh, the coronavirus situation and has helped, uh, you know, uh, ch channeling them through the various uh, services. This is is a, uh, a system that I've seen an incredible usage by the population, really peak, uh, peak usages, and only a very performant digital infrastructure can support that. And as you said, uh, the work models have also changed. Um, let's think about uh, the remote working or smart working uh, practices that we are all used, uh, what we are all used to, and uh, um, how really we are relying more on uh, collaboration platform uh, that, and how we are looking for a solution that help uh, uh, to, let's say, automate certain part of, uh, of our flow, uh, workflow. Um, again, we need infrastructure that uh, help us to access the data on time, that uh, help us uh, supporting those systems that automate the processes, that help us embedding uh, this information uh, within, within, within the workflow. So really, CIOs today need to look at uh, how the digital infrastructure will help to address uh, the typical barrier of innovation, which is which are the inability to access the data, uh, to um, uh, support, uh, to, uh, how to automate uh, manual processes, uh, really how, to how the infrastructure will support the workforce needs in terms of data and processes cap uh, capabilities. So it is clear when we see a new business model as the one of the uh, of the patient services that I've just uh, uh, that we just discussed, or new work models as uh, uh, remote working. Uh, it's clear that the infrastructure is not just, uh, let's say, a technology enabler, but it's also a differentiating factor on the performance, on the business growth, because uh, the better teams work together, the more efficient and more productive they are, uh, the better patient can access services, the, the, uh, the better will be the outcomes of uh, uh, the, the healthcare services. So we are really talking about the components of value in any industry, here in healthcare in particular, uh, the example that I share for healthcare, but let's think about customer uh, services, let's think about uh, uh, collaborative models in also in different industry. Really, we are looking at uh, uh, the so what of the different industries. So, so I think it's clear that we can assume that uh, today infrastructure is a business enabler, not anymore a technology enabler, and that, that is very clear. Uh, one, one of the things uh, when we discuss about the future of digital infrastructure, and I think it's inter interesting to, to show, is that we are not discussing things of the multiple infrastructures that a company or an organization will implement. We are really looking to a, a common view of the infrastructure, right? It's like when we 
we discuss about the future of enterprise. It's not the multiple things that the organization is doing, it's the enterprise as a whole. So can you, can you show us, or share with us, uh, how the digital, the future of digital infrastructure looks like? How IDC is organizing this common view? What is the framework that we use to show how the future of the digital infrastructure looks like? Actually, you, you make a good point. Uh, we need to look at uh, the digital infrastructure from a more comprehensive end-to-end -end or holistic, if you pass me the term, uh, view. And uh, in particular, it's important, uh, given the business impact that we have uh, uh, just described, to look at the future of digital infrastructure from the lenses of a renewed business agility. This is valid for healthcare, as I will explain, but as well for the other industry. We need to look at the infrastructure technology elements, knowing that uh, they will serve the enterprise, of course, as well as the relationship with the broader ecosystem. So the infrastructure will need to be intelligence infused uh, to serve the needs for resilience, for resource optimization, and most importantly, for what IDC calls the continuous enhancement of the processes. And the infrastructure also needs to respond to the fast changes of the business environment. And these fast changes of the business environment reflect also on how uh, the infrastructure is procured, is purchased. After COVID, for example, we are seeing the healthcare IT decision maker uh, privileging speed of implementation as key buying criteria. And we have seen, uh, therefore, an acceleration of uh, cloud-based solution. So the emerging digital inf infrastructure ecosystem is increasingly built on cloud foundation and focuses on ensuring faster delivery of innovative infrastructure technologies to support the development and the continual refinement of resilient digital services and digital experiences. So there are, let's say, a few elements that build this uh, uh, digital infrastructure ecosystem. So for instance, cloud-centric technology can be seen as the first pillar of the future digital infrastructure. It offered the foundation that um, uh, is required by digital transformation and that cannot be uh, provided by uh, the traditional infrastructure offerings. Uh, the second pillar is the ubiquitous deployment uh, that will help uh, sh shaping consistent and seamless infrastructure strategies by enabling this continuous resilience in the usage of asset, in the consumption model, as well as in the location services of infrastructure. And the third pillar is about autonomous operation, which uh, hopefully will support a bias for automation which means that we'll be relying on artificial intelligence capabilities uh, to facilitate a more proactive management of the infrastructure and to facilitate uh, this uh, environment of continual enhancement. Okay. Uh, one of the, the things that I, I like in this, uh, in this uh, framework, or at least this view, is to make it clear that it's not about cloud. Uh, it's about resource optimization. So I think the companies and organizations have been discussing cloud sometimes because of the cloud itself. And here is very clear that our predictions are not discussing, oh, implement cloud. No, what we are asking is make sure that you have the best resource optimization you can. Uh, what are the predictions that we have in our future scrape right now specifically relate to the way how cloud is impacting this vision of the future digital infrastructure? Now you said it well, it's uh, obviously the digital infrastructure has a cloud foundation, but it's not all about cloud. You should think about cloud as one of the, let's say, options that are available for the uh, IT executive and for the business executives. Um, clearly, uh, 
cloud has, is an important is an important part because the shift toward cloud native will drive infrastructure agility and operational efficiency. Um, the um, really this really mat will materialize in the shift to core application that are built on cloud native architecture that will let's say work that will work across different uh, deployment options, whether it's at core, whether it's at the edge. And this will help uh, um, increase the overall resiliency of the, uh, of the uh, organization. And what's uh, interesting here and what IDC predicts is that by 2024, about 75% of the enterprise will prioritize infrastructure agility and operational efficiency. And this will lead to an increase, five-time increase in the adoption of the uh, cloud native architecture for core business application. And we are already seeing this happening also in very, uh, let's say, um, traditional environment as healthcare, where already nearly 30% of uh, European healthcare organization that we uh, recently interviewed are using or planning to use cloud to deploy uh, core applications. So you see here how cloud is not anymore about hardware, but on the possibilities in terms of business agility uh, and uh, that uh, that uh, that cloud uh, that cloud brings and. Uh, this is mainly due to the fact that uh, the enterprises require access to technology solutions that uh, enable real-time processing of data, um, intensive uh, um, big data analysis, low latency, uh, and this interconnection that can come only with cloud-based technologies. And what we are seeing specifically when uh, we see more and more organization looking toward cloud-based architecture and uh, uh, cloud-based core application is the fact that uh, cloud is forcing enterprises to look at their data management strategy. And we predict that by 2023, the 80% of the enterprise will create a single company-wide data management strategy to break down the data silos that will facilitate the usage of cloud and also will facilitate you a secure usage of cloud, a compliant usage of cloud. And for organization, for instance, uh, as in healthcare, this uh, is very, a, a, a very, a very imp important topic. So cloud, uh, if actually will drive this uh, unified uh, uh, data management strategy will be not only anymore something that we will use for business resilience, you see, but as a basis for innovation. One, one of the things that we discuss when we discuss about business resilience sometimes is to be able to to be uh, to react or at least to follow the change and uh, the next normal is basically the the continuous change that will uh, make the companies to be in continuous innovation we've been discussing in an IDC about that for some time so uh, having the infrastructure available sometimes is to uh, let the business have their use cases and make uh, these ubiquities like we say in the framework uh, how this uh, continuous uh, improvement of the organization is also supported by this platform or this consistent platform, this ubiquitous deployment, what do you mean with that? Uh, well, actually, you've partly already answered because it's really about uh, uh, ubiquitous deployment, which means uh, the effective use and timely access to infrastructure anywhere, everywhere, that uh, really are imperative to support that uh, adaptive, resilient, secure, and compliant digital business model that we have been uh, talking about. Um, digitally driven businesses must take a really an holistic approach in assessing and leveraging all the available deployment options across uh, this infrastructure ecosystem. Um, 
And so they will need to be able to weight uh, the advantages and the disadvantages across three axes of deployment, which are location, asset usage model, and consumption model. And this three, let's say, this capability of assess the, uh, along these three uh, axes, if you will, uh, will determine the uh, capability of uh, organization to improve their business agility and their resilience. When we talk about consumption, we think we must think about how organization uh, will leverage a range of consumption model and. Um, uh that will include the front end uh, uh, capex uh, investment or acquisition to as a service uh, opex uh, kind of funding and the ability to let's say balance between capex and opex will uh, help uh, uh, will uh, will help enterprises to be more aligned with the business requirements to be more dynamic in the way in which they acquire and implement uh, their technologies and for healthcare this is a kind of a revolution because we know that high acquisition cost is the top it's perceived as the top barrier when implementing work transformation initiatives. When we talk about location, uh, we need to think that uh, digital transformation per se requires uh, a new approach to where, where we place our IT resources. And in particular, when it comes to the edge or to the core. And, you know, this location to this uh, IT resources placement uh, and the new the new technology use cases uh, have a range of requirements uh, in terms of latency, reliability, cost, security, compliance, the usual stuff. But uh, really they, the, uh, the enterprises will uh, increasingly need to deploy and access uh, infrastructure in different environments and therefore they will need to balance uh, the, uh, the the different use uh, the, the different uh, use cases uh, use cases requirement and let's think about uh, how during the last 12 months uh, we have seen uh, for instance an increase on investment in edge use cases and like uh, IOT uh, imaging, video processing, uh, in particular, enterprise medical imaging for healthcare, it's been uh, in incredibly accelerated uh, uh, by COVID. And this has an impact on how uh, the uh, location of the IT resources is, uh, is well balanced to you know, uh, provide uh, this reliability. And finally, when we talk about asset usage uh, we need to think about that one of the key innovation that cloud brings in particular infrastructure as a service brings is the fact that we can finally uh, extend the infrastructure we can share the infrastructure across organization across different uh, dif uh, different workloads and this is a, an, an incredible uh, an incredible advantages especially if we are thinking about the industry ecosystem so uh, and if we think about increased collaboration and data sharing and how to make sure, sure that this data sharing is uh, supported by a secure infrastructure so I think that uh, balancing all these three elements will uh, help uh, um, uh, organizations to really increase their resiliency, but also their business growth. That last one about the assets, uh, let, let me just make clear that once upon a time, we discussed about this topic, calling it data center, okay? So basically, if we want to make the transition, organizations are changing the way they are looking to their data center. Uh, what are, in our perspective, the, the main priorities that nowadays we see when an organization wants to uh, envision or view a different way of their data center? What are the top priorities that we look uh, to this uh, topic of the data centers. 
Well, the priorities, well, you see them listed here. These in particular are those for healthcare, but I think that they are very similar to also other uh, industries. The first one is really to improve automation and orchestration. And autonomous operation is really the third pillar of the uh, digital infrastructure of the digital infrastructure uh, ecosystem and when we talk about autonomous operations we means that we will rely more on artificial intelligence machine learning and you know policy driven automation mechanism uh, and you know low code serverless workflow really to enable a more consistent and self-driving infrastructure that really spans across all the physical and logical assets. Um, as part of these capabilities, for instance, uh, cloud-based provisioning offers a control point and self-services capabilities that free up the time of the IT department. And this is very important because it offers the opportunity to uh, develop uh, more, uh, let's say, in innovative skills within the IT department. Think about uh, DevOps teams that will support innovation. Um, generally, for all industries, IDC predict that by 2023, 75% of global 2000 IT organization will adopt automated operation practices to transform their IT workforce to support an, uh, to support an unprecedented scale. And uh, autonomous operation, however, we need to be made clear, it's not really just about IT management. Um, it's really it's about how to embed you know uh, workflow automation also in business critical workloads uh, to make real time business decision that uh, really impact uh, business and processes outcome for instance in healthcare we predict that by 2023 30% of healthcare organization business and clinical decision will be informed by um, artificial insight so uh you see here uh, how how autonomous operation again as element of the digital infrastructure both impact the let's say i pure it management as well as the innovation potential of an organization okay okay so we are reaching our time just as a, a final message just to make clear that everyone understand that the future of digital infrastructure is not a project okay it's not something that you can buy is something that you can have as a vision so you have to have somehow a roadmap uh, how, how can we develop this roadmap what are the steps that we can uh, perform to reach or to move in this direction of this vision no, absolutely. You're absolutely lying. It's not something that you buy. It's not uh, just buying a tech part of the technology stack. Of course, it involves procuring system, but uh, it's really about setting up uh, the right strategy. And I think that in the next, let's say, two years in particular, the critical challenges for CIOs and their teams and for business executives as well uh, will be managing the transition from uh, uh, the traditional infrastructure to this new approach that we uh, that I've been describing and how to do that without uh, jeopardizing the ongoing workflow and the ongoing resilience and security of uh, existing uh, of existing uh, uh, IT infra infrastructure so it's uh, really managing this transition without uh, with uh, minimal disruption and for that we have envisioned like a sort of a three uh, um, layered or, or horizon based uh, strategy where in the short term we focus on uh, the reimagining the digital infrastructure so executives needs to investigate on flexible and on as a service 
option when procuring uh, the IT infrastructure. Uh, they need to investigate the impact of process and technology investment on the workforce, whether it's remote, whether it's hybrid, whether it's a combination, and assuming that this will stay also in the future. Um, and also they need to explore investments in a unified management system which looks into on-prem cloud-based technologies uh, that looks into the data center, into the networking to understand from, let's say, a single point of view, how to improve their bus uh, the business resilience and how to respond to the different threats. On the medium term, let's say to the next three to four years, uh, organization needs to look into educating and transforming uh, how um, the C-suite uh, uh, see the infrastructure strategies and investment, uh, providing end-to-end -end visibility to uh, the impact of the infrastructure quality, optimization, resiliency, so forth and so on. Um, they need to create an organization-wide unified data management strategy, because as we have seen before, uh, it's uh, really important to, uh, let's say, uh, benefit from all the advantages that, uh, for instance, cloud-based uh, uh, solution offer, and it also offers incredible um, advantages in terms of security, trust, and uh, uh, and governance. And also they need to think about how to invest in uh, training for new skills uh, for autonomous operation, think about uh, DevOps, uh, uh, think, uh, think about uh, data centric, uh, creating data centric innovation teams that will help the business achieving their, uh, their objectives. In the future, we need to look at uh, how we envision the future enterprise, how we will leverage AI, um, whether because they, they acquire uh, capabilities from uh, external partner or, or they are developed in-house and uh, how the overall enterprise will shift to a more cloud native okay. uh, um, application portfolio. And uh, this is not a simple a simple task. Okay. And most okay. importantly, across these three kind of horizon, is important that the organization develops specific or let's say new key performance indicators uh, that look at the three elements that we have introduced at the beginning where we were, let's say, giving an overview of the uh, new digital infrastructure okay, ecosystem. Okay. Uh, so basically one KPI. Are KPIs about. One KPI for each sorry, pillar, Yes, right? of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Yes, exactly, exactly. And okay. uh, the one that you see here listed is about really thinking about uh, how they ensure continual enhancement. So how to make sure that we do not build up on technical, uh, on technical debt. Um, how there is a, a consistent resiliency. So when something like COVID occur, we are able to flatten the curve. So we are able to uh, going back to normal or uh, to a functioning normal, let's say uh, in a faster time. So for instance, by setting up uh, um, KPIs around the uh, timing on the failovers and fail back or, uh, you know, um, how uh, how the, the different uh, systems and the different deployment models will support each other. Okay. And finally, okay. it's about the resource optimization. Uh, so making sure that uh, these KPIs will tell us where there are waste, where there are opportunities uh, missed. So, okay. and uh, this will mean looking into how this new digital infrastructure uh, enable agile and consistent scaling up and down, enable us to add new capabilities on demand, and how 
help us to increase uh, the application mobility across the different infrastructure and okay, platform okay. that the organization will use. Okay, okay. Thank, th thank you very much. So basically, it's it's wish for the best, but prepare for the worst. So and having an infrastructure that can adapt to that. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you very much for your presence. It was very nice to, to have this conversation with you. Obrigado a todos pela vossa presença. Até à próxima.